Let's add buttons and pressure plates to Minecraft with fabric. Let's see how to do that. All right, we found some black and IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to add buttons and pressure plates to Minecraft. Adding those with fabric is once again a little more complicated than just taking the button block and the pressure plate block and creating a new instance of those. We actually need to create a custom block for both of these this time, but no worries, we're going to get through this fine. So let's copy the Ruby fence twice and let's call it Ruby underscore button. And then we're gonna also call this one the Ruby underscore pressure underscore plate. And let's not forget to change the names here. So Ruby button, and then this is going to be the Ruby pressure underscore plate. Before we change the blocks here, we actually have to create the mod blocks. So right click new Java class, and this is going to be the mod pressure plate block. And this will extend the pressure plate block. And then we will simply hover over this create constructor matching super and we will change this to public here. And then let's immediately create the other one as well. So right click on the custom package, new Java class. This is going to be the mod stone button block. And this is going to extend the stone button block class. And once again, create constructor matching super. We're gonna change this to public. Now the classes are done. We can go back to our mod blocks class and then change this to mod stone button block here. And then this can be changed to the mod pressure plate block and we'll get an error here because we need to put in a activation rule here and that's simply going to be activation rule everything for the time being and that you can of course also change you could either say mobs or everything we're just going to keep it at everything for the time being that's fine so that is actually all the code we need once again the bulk of the work is in the json files right let's copy over the block states for both of these and as you can see the block state for the pressure plate is actually fairly simple we simply have powered on or powered off we're simply taking a look at two different models Ruby pressure plate and Ruby pressure plate down. Now, when it comes to the button, this is a bit more complicated because once again, we have three different variants of so three different variables here that can change. And depending on those, of course, the actual model changes, the rotation changes, and so on and so forth. This is why there are so many models here. Once again, of course, if you want to change this, if you have a different mod ID and a different button, you can simply select this, press Control R, and then replace all with this, or select here the Ruby and then also. Control R and then change all of that if you want to. The JSON files are of course all available in the description below so you can download that in the GitHub repository or in the gist. So let's also add the block models here. Those are five, three for the button and three for the pressure plate. And as you can see, the button has a Ruby button here. This is simply the button. Once again, has the texture texture here and points to the Ruby block texture. The inventory button is simply how the button is displayed in the inventory once again. So this is what's going to be referred to from the item model. And then the button pressed is simply the button that is sort of a little bit smaller. When you press a button, then this actually gets activated. The Ruby pressure plate is fairly straightforward as well. The normal pressure underscore plate has the pressure underscore plate up parent here. And then the other one has pressure plate down as its parent. The pressure plate item model simply refers back to the pressure plate block model as you can see and as I've already mentioned the ruby button simply refers to the ruby button inventory block model so that it's displayed properly in the inventory. And we don't need to add anything else so only add the translation to the en underscore us json file and then let's see if it works. Or right, we find ourselves back in Minecraft and as you can see, I have the pressure plate, I have the button and let's see. So, so redstone connects completely normally. As you can see, if I step on the pressure plate, it works. I can also throw items on it because of course we put in the activation type everything and the button also works totally fine. So as you can see, this is how easy it can be to add pressure plates and buttons to the game. Right, and that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would of course appreciate a like. And I will see you in the next tutorial. So yeah.